Okay, wonderful. So now I'm going to rewrite this paragraph descriptively using the answers to these questions. The large 30 by 30 tree house is pink on the exterior with purple polka dots. This is a little large actually. Make it a bit smaller so I can actually see the questions. The large 30 by 30 tree house is pink on the exterior with purple polka dots and blue on the interior. Where is the tree house? It sits beside, it sits, um, let's see, beside a placid lake where inside there is a flat screen TV, oops, screen TV, as well as polished mahogany furniture, including, including armchairs, desks, and an armoire. How many windows does the treehouse have? It is, it has the treehouse, or we can say it probably. It has 15 stained glass, I just like stained glass for some reason. Okay, it has 15 stained glass windows. And it was made from sturdy birch wood. And who built the treehouse finally? Principal small schools. It was a, it was, or we can say the treehouse. The treehouse was built as a collaborative, collaborative, oh my god, I'm having difficulty spelling that. Collaborative effort from all the principals from all the schools. Okay, great, so that is a description that has been written more descriptive, hopefully, than the previous, and I'll read this out. The large 30 by 30 treehouse is pink on the exterior with purple polka dots and blue on the interior. It sits beside a placid lake. Inside, there's a flat screen TV, as well as polished mahogany furniture, including armchairs, desks, and an armoire. It has 15 stained glass windows and was made from sturdy birch wood. The treehouse was built as a collaborative effort from all the principals from all the schools. Okay, so this is my opinion, but I think that this is more descriptive than the last one. So, um, to, to remind you, the first sentence was like this. We made a treehouse. The treehouse is in a tree. The treehouse has windows and a door. Okay, now we've answered what it's made of, who made it, what's in it, uh, where it is and many other questions, and I think that it is much better as a result, and I hope that you agree with me. So, who thinks that this sentence is better than the previous, previous paragraph? Okay, I'm glad that I see many raised hands. Thank you very much, and I think so too. I mean, obviously this could be improved in a few ways, and um, we can always edit it, but I think that this is definitely a better start than the previous. Okay, back to the presentation. Why do we want to add details? Well, they give a story we like. Before, my sister had a smile on her face. After, my sister smiled like a cunning chihuahua. Now, if you've ever seen one of those, you know how utterly frightening they can be. And I'm not trying to say that my sister is frightening, but she was kind of bad. Okay, details make a story unique. Before, my grandmother drove us to the amusement park. After, my grandmother drove us to the amusement park in her old Dodge Dart, which smelled like a poodle. So basically, the rationale here is that anyone can get their grandmother, or at least a parent or relative, to drive them to the amusement park, at least if you're good for that week. But not everyone can get their grandmother to drive them to the amusement park in an old Dodge in an old Dodge Dart, which smells like a poodle. I think that's quite special. Details make a story exciting. Before the cat jumped on me. After the huge hairy cat jumped on me, sinking its 
claws into my sweater. And for effect, you could always add blood-stained claws. So let's practice adding details to one of these. Either the tiger yawned, Corey hit a home run, my sister yelled at me, or I could tell my mom was getting mad. So one of these, uh, let's start with my sister yelled at me. Do any of you have siblings, sisters or brothers? Raise your hand if you have either. Okay, I see a lot of raised hands. Wonderful. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun to have siblings, although I agree they sometimes are a pain. And they're really fun to have around when they yell at you, not so much. So, let's practice using our descriptive language and details to describe a sister getting mad. Starting with classroom A, with white walls and floor hockey sign. Uh, what, does, what does the sister look like? If your sister was mad or your brother was mad, what would they look like? monster and has flushed cheeks. You know, that's very good. Very good. Looks like a monster using some uh, simile there. Figurative language is very useful. And also, flushed cheeks is typical of people who are mad. Uh, and um, in fact, one person in, in another video on the same presentation, though, that reminds me, he said, oh, my sister was as mad, was this mad, and her face was as red as a hot cayenne pepper. So flushed cheeks definitely makes sense. Okay. So my sister was so mad that she was starting to look like a monster. Her cheeks were flushed. Now moving on to classroom B with blue walls. Can you add some more to that? Classroom B with blue walls, please. Jesse? saying basically that her uh, she looks really scary kind of evil looking is what you're saying yeah. okay so we can incorporate that definitely with the monster element so and I'm not trying to like uh, criticize sisters in general here this is really fun um, okay so basically our description can now be my my sister was so mad that she's beginning to look like an evil monster with uh, with evil, with an evil looking, with evil looking flesh cheeks and eyes that bored into my, or stared at me with utter hatred or something like that. That might be a little strong, but you get my drift. Okay, now classroom C, what would you like to add to that? <coughs> classroom C. Got her hands on her hips and stared right into my eyes. Okay, uh, my sister does that a lot, uh, coincidentally. Okay, uh, very good. So my sister was beginning to get so mad that her that her uh, that sorry that she began to look like an evil monster with flushed cheeks and evil eyes that stared straight into mine as she stood with her hands on her hips. Okay, excellent job, everyone. Thank you very much for helping me make that sentence more descriptive. So another thing, to make an interesting topic interesting, add detailed information. Before the spaceship was big, we flew to a planet. Well, I have some questions here. So I rewrote that as we climbed into. So when people might ask, how did you get into the spaceship? We climbed into it. The big titanium spaceship and flew out in the starry space. After several years, so how long did it take you? We finally reached where? The planet Zorian. So there are the details. Okay, oops, sorry, wrong slide. Let me see where, okay. And um, so basically details can help you not confuse the reader. They can help you help the reader see things and they can help you make your stories and articles more interesting as well as make them unique and lively and sometimes more exciting. So here's another tip to make your writing more interesting. Tip number two. Look at your topic from a new angle. So would anyone like to guess what that means? Or tell me what it means. No. Looking at a topic from a new angle. Starting with classroom C, where are we on? Classroom C. Do you have any ideas what looking at a topic from a new angle 